Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for this final edition of IPA Week of Pain. And I'm cracking open the last beer out of the Aldi Variety Pack by Pithead Brewing Company. And this one is West Coast IPA. Now, in one of the earlier episodes, I know that I said that I thought there was a New England in a West Coast. It was a Session IPA in a West Coast. Also, Hazy IPA and American IPA to round out the variety pack. I think I paid $14.49 for it in uh, Council Plus, Iowa. Not a bad price. I know I saw online some, one of the many of your websites was saying that it was $12.99, and it might be in some locations, but I'm pretty sure the one I picked up was $14.49, which so far I don't think is a bad price unless this one is just absolute garbage. But, um, so far, the other ones have been pretty decent. I'm not a big IPA guy, uh, but these are probably more up my alley. So far, they've not been overwhelmingly bitter. Um, pretty mild in flavors. Um, probably less flavorful than a true IPA fan would appreciate, but for me, it does the trick. All right, so it looks like this West Coast IPA, West Coast style IPA, weighs in at six percent alcohol and again this is made by state of brewing out of wanakee wisconsin but on the front it says it's made by pithead brewing company i don't know what that's about when i went to the website it seemed really shady so i'm gonna i'm not leaving a link to that website let's crack this pack out open and see what this west coast style is all about it's a slow eruptor got a little bit of foam coming out there that just tells me that I can't wait to get into the glass. All right. Got just a wee bit of a hard pour going on. Um, looks like knife whitehead. Some might even say tan on this one. Actually, let me take off the shades. No, no I think people would just say off-white. Um, golden body. wipe some of that steam off and kind of see my fingers through but not very well and that head is sticking around so I guess I'm just gonna have to continue on hmm. excuse me oh I do apologize that's terribly rude oh for heaven's sake I do apologize, this is uh, my fourth video of the night and I've just kind of been firing them off so that I can get to cooking supper. I got some bronze lawn over here, I got some veggies I gotta chop up, so thought I would try to get my videos in while, while letting the, the broths thaw. Alright, um, really all I'm picking up is the slightest bit of pininess. picking up much from the nose, maybe because it's my fourth video of the night. I, I've heard that like while you're wine tasting, you're supposed to sniff coffee grounds in between it, like cleanses your palate. Probably should have done that. Um, but I, I guess I was in such a hurry to get to my IPA week of pain that I just simply forgot. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Cheers. Very subtle sweetness. Kind of like a citrusy sweetness.
medium light body. Like, as it sets on the tongue, the bitterness builds a little bit. I guess I was expecting something a little juicier, like there might be some grapefruit or some pineapples, something along those lines. But there's like a subtle fruity sweetness. But like I said, the the hops seem to be building. I'm not but honestly, I'm such I'm so out of touch with the IPA scene. I don't truly know the difference between all the different styles of IPA. But at least out of this variety pack, this one's probably the most bitter, and it's not even terribly bitter. It just it builds a little bit. So, there's that, and oddly enough, maybe also the sweetest. Yeah, um, again, not a bad IPA. The, the hoppiness is mild enough for a malt head like me. Might be enough for a true IPA fan, the, the hop heads of the world. And this is the Malt Gentleman reminding you. You only have one liver, so use it wisely.